So if you've been considering getting a pet ball python, I've put together a list of pros and cons as to why I think these guys might be the best pet for you. So if you guys are interested, let's go check it out. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Josue from Josue's Exotics, and if you're new to the channel, we make videos about reptiles and amphibians and how to take care of them. And we also try to answer any questions that you guys may have about these guys. So if you have any questions, always feel free to leave so down in the comments, and if you're interested in this kind of content, consider subscribing. So this is what most people would consider a ball python, or in some places, a royal python. Their scientific name is Python Regius. They live in the grasslands and sparse woodlands of the West African savanna, where they spend most of their life in underground burrows. And they mainly are nocturnal and they are shorter and stockier snakes compared to other constrictors. They are boldly marked in black and tan, which is a natural camouflage amongst short vegetation and they can reach on average around 5 feet or so. So for the first pro, the number one reason why you should get a ball python is that they are one of the easiest pets to take care of and they're super low maintenance. A simple enclosure can consist of a heating pad with a thermostat, a 20 gallon enclosure, a locking screen top, two hides, substrate, and a water dish, and boom, you have a beginner enclosure for your animal. After you have the initial setup done, later on you can go back and you can buy other things like that if you want to make it more aesthetically pleasing to you and also give your snake a little bit more enrichment. So for the second reason why you should get a ball python is the fact that uh, getting food for these guys is going to be relatively easy. So if you're first starting out with a baby ball python, uh, they're probably going to need to eat maybe once a week and you're going to have to keep up with that actual feeding schedule of these guys, which isn't too hard. Uh, one of the easier things you can do, you can set a Google Calendar or Apple Calendar, whatever you have in your phone and make an event for it and make it come up weekly and that's what I use to actually keep up with all my different feeding schedule for my snakes. Because uh, whenever you have maybe four or five different snakes and they all eat at different intervals, it's kind of hard to keep it all together and I just find that a whole lot easier. Currently I'm buying all my rodents from rodentpro.com. I'll put a picture over here of these guys. I would highly recommend buying rodents from those guys. Uh, they sell them at a pretty decent price. It's actually cheaper than what you can get at Petco or any of your local pet stores or anything like that. And you can also buy them in bulk, which is definitely going to save you a lot of money, in my opinion. I actually have a package coming in on the 4th or the 5th. So it does take a couple days to actually get it to you. But especially in the wintertime, you don't have to worry about them getting thawed out or anything like that. Because they're going to stay pretty frozen. I forgot to mention that also these guys you can pick up anything from mice all the way up to many chicks. You can also get pigs and rabbits and other different kind of feeders like that for various reptiles. So if the next pro that I have on the list is the fact that these guys really don't need a whole lot of attention. These guys are pretty much solitary creatures and are housed alone unless for breeding purposes. I only recommend handling your snakes maybe three to five times out the week, at most if you would like. They tend to like handling more or less, they just tolerate it in my opinion. So for the next pro that we have is the fact that bow pythons can live for a pretty long time. I believe when I was searching online it mentioned that these guys could possibly live up to 30 years, which is a pretty awesome thing in my opinion because you don't have to worry about pets passing away as much and you can enjoy them for a very long time. So the number one con for owning ball pythons is the fact that occasionally these guys tend to go off of food. It's fairly common for ball pythons to go off of food around breeding season which can start out in mid-September and go all the way to mid-November. Someone correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments about the time frame for the breeding season and just let me know. You can just Google ball pythons going off a of feed and the number of articles and forums online is tremendous and it's absolutely crazy how much stuff is on there about it. With that being said, I would only consider that being an option if your husbandry is 100% correct. Meaning that your temperatures are correct and your hot spot and your cool spot and you have water in there for them, you feed them and they're also on a real good feeding schedule. 
The next most important con about having a ball python or any kind of exotic pet really is the fact that you're going to need to make sure that there's a veterinary close by or at least know the location of a veterinary you can take your pet in case you have an emergency or just need to get a checkup and make sure they're doing okay. I feel like this is something that's often overlooked and it's one of the more important things about doing research before you actually get an animal. I always like to include this tip in all my videos so that way I can make sure to remind everybody to always do your research before you get an animal, especially with something as important as knowing if there's a vet close by. Another con to keeping ball pythons or snakes in general is the fact that you have to feed these guys rodents. A lot of people, they can feel that this is a little bit of a weird thing, which they do have garter snakes and those snakes don't actually eat rodents. So you can feed them fish and worms and other little things like that and they can live perfectly fine. But feeding your snakes rodents, you can go online as Rodent Pro, as I mentioned earlier, and buy frozen thawed rodents, which is probably gonna be a little bit better option because you can actually store these guys a little bit more long term which is gonna be a whole lot better for you because as I mentioned before, buying in bulk is definitely gonna save you a pretty good bit of money. As I mentioned earlier in the video, these guys don't really need a lot of attention and they're pretty low maintenance pets and they don't really like to be handled, they more or less tolerate it. So if you're looking for a pet that you kinda of wanna come home and cuddle with every day, these guys are definitely not gonna be the right pet for you. So if you guys are enjoying the video so far, why don't you smash that subscribe button down below and hit the like button while you're down there. I plan on making more pro versus con videos in the future. So if you guys don't mind, tell me what you guys think about these past couple videos and if you guys think I should continue with it. If you'd like to check out some more of my videos, I'll put some links on the right side of the screen so you guys can go check it out. And thanks for watching.